Racing became more complicated in the last 20 years, not only for the rules, but also for the technical features. And this is the same for the racing games, which wants to emulate the real racing in the most realistic way as possible. Today we are going to see two of them, which we see quite often in some championships such as Formula 1 and World Endurance Championship, the DRS and the ERS. In this video I won't focus too much on the technical part, but how to exploit them better to improve your performances. Ready? As you know, faster you go, higher will be the drag resistance to your car because of the air. Things get even worse on straight line when you have a lot of downforce which crashes your car to the ground thanks to the air. You get even more drag and because of that a lower to speed. So how to fix that? Simply remove the unnecessary downforce on straight, allowing you to touch higher to speeds. But of course, if you forget to remove it, after the straight, this will happen. Luckily, in most of cases, when you brake, the DRS turns off automatically. The golden question is, when is it better to turn it on? It depends. For example, according to Formula 1, during a race you can activate the DRS after few laps after the beginning of a race, and after you can activate it only when you are less than one second close to your opponent in some areas of the track called DRS zones. So, the use of the DRS is quite limited and it's made only to get closer to your opponent or to overtake him, in a too easy way if you allow my opinion, but uh, this is another story. During qualifications you can use it all the time you want on the DRS zones to make your fast out laps. I highly discourage the use of the DRS on rainy sessions or when the tarmac's grip is low. In these cases you need grip and activating the DRS could be a suicide. Otherwise, when you see a straight and you want to beat your personal hot lap, use it always, simple as that. The story here is a bit more complicated compared to the DRS and I'll explain you the reason. Before passing to the ERS, let's show you the differences between ERS and CURS. CURS, Kinetic Energy Recovering System, only recovers the braking energy, so when you brake. While the ERS, Energy Recovering System, recovers the energy from both braking and engine heat. Thanks to this hybrid system from both petrol and electric engines, your car features more as power. Many cars gives you the possibility to set the ARS according to its availability during the lap, medium, high and overtake if you need all the power of it. 
You can also set it on manual and activate it or simply keep it on low and give yourself a boost when you need it the most. But how to exploit better the extra horsepower given by the ARS avoiding remaining without energy when you need it? You have to watch at several parameters, the track conformation, the track length, the car specs, uh, the traffic, the tight status, etc. Let's take the moments when it's better to don't use the ERS or set it very low. At low speeds, because you risk to spin. On very short streets, where the gain in terms of speed isn't to be. At top speeds, where once again the gain in terms of time is low. And when there is too much traffic in front of you. Of course, the concept I explained before with the DRS is valid for the ERS as well. Be sure you have grip enough to transfer all the power from the wheels to the ground, otherwise it's useless to use it. You will just waste the extra power for nothing. So, saving the energy on the ERS is essential. It's better to be sure to turn it off on the moments you really don't need it. For example, at the end of a street or at very slow speeds. Because uh, keep in mind that you can use a limited amount of ERS through just one lap. So, when it's better to use the ERS? The beginning of a very long street, for example, but way to be at decent speed to activate it. As you know, putting more power while cornering increases the probability to spin, so be sure you have a good dose of traction when you want to boost your car. When you have to overtake someone, okay, the guy who is in front of you will use the ERS as well to defend his position, but if you use your ARS in a smarter way and you save you enough energy for a long straight, this will pay you a lot of your efforts. The ERS is useful especially in the first two laps, where there is more probability to overtake your opponents because all the cars are very close to each other. The ERS is a precious ally in this case, because somehow it's easier to overtake at the beginning of the race through the confusion instead of the middle of the race. So, 
I hope that this video helped you to understand the DRS and the ERS and how to exploit them better to improve your performances. Be tactical at using these two useful tools according to your tire status, to the race status and to the traffic. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video!